everyone, this is Jacob from Rebelflow. Today I'm going to show you how to use image level augmentations and image preprocessing to build better computer vision models. The best thing about our tutorial today is that it requires no code to easily get started building your computer vision model today with the Rebelflow platform. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the data set that we're going to be working on today. So we have a pretty sparse data set as gathering data and annotating data is expensive. So we have an example here of a public data set, which is an aerial data set taken via a drone as it's flying over the lake. So here we have the aerial maritime drone data set, and this is public on RoboFlow, so I'll go ahead and link it below if you want to go ahead and replicate the steps that we take in this tutorial um, to see how things are working on, on your end with um, your own hands on the data. Um, but you could bring, bring in any data set here. Um, so a little bit more about this data set. Here's a little GIF of the CTO of Reboflow, Brad, flying a drone over the lake and taking these images. Um, and here's a little picture of what the images look like. So here you can see we've taken pictures of boats on the water, and we've also annotated things like dots, docks, and jet skis. Um, and th these are all present in our data set. So this is the data set we're going to uh, be using. If you want it, you use it. You can go ahead and just click fork data set to bring it into your um, own account. Um, I've already done that and downloaded it locally, but now I'll show you an example of how you can bring your data set in and start augmenting and pre-processing um, by loading your, your data set into the platform here. Uh, so all you need to do is go ahead and go over here and hit sign in. So we'll go ahead and sign in and we'll create a new data set. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a data set here and we'll call it Arial uh, YouTube. And we'll just have the annotation group called objects here. Um, and we'll go ahead and create data set. Now here is where you just would drop in your files and uh, drop in your images and annotations to get started on augmenting and pre-processing your images. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hit select files here. And I've got the uh, data set here in a Coco JSON format. Uh, we support pretty much any format, so you should be able to just drag and drop any uh, data set format in here and, and get uh, going right away. Um, so here you can see we've loaded in our images, and um, now we're going to go ahead and kind of move on to the data set versioning step. So we'll go ahead and click uh, Finish Upload here. Um, and this will uh, split the data set into train, valid, and test. Uh, today we're going to be showing metrics on the validation set. Um, and we'll be doing our training jobs uh, based on the training set. So we'll go ahead and um, hit continue here, and this will go ahead and upload uh, the data into the RoboFlow platform. So before we get started on kind of trying to model this data set, um, we're going to want to sort of get a feel for the way that the data set looks and the things that we might want to do to it that might make our model even better. So the first thing we can do here is to first check the data set health check. So as I mentioned, this is a pretty sparse data set, um, especially for the complexity of the problem we're trying to model. We're trying to identify lift, docks, jet skis, cars, and boats. And these things can kind of appear in different ways in different images. Um, as you can see here, we have mostly lifts and mostly docks and um, uh, very few boats. But um, another thing that's useful to do before you get started modeling your data set is just to do a little bit of a preview here to get a look at the images that you're going to be modeling with. So one thing I'm noticing here right off the bat is that the docks and the lifts are actually very close to overlapping. Um, so that might kind of confuse the model if it's trying to parse out and identify things that are um, in overlapping bonding boxes in the same place. Um, and then another thing worth noting is that uh, these objects are pretty far and pretty zoomed out. So that means there's not too many pixels for the model to be making its inferences uh, based on as it's, as it's working through and learning how to model the problem. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically it. Now we can get started on uh, sort of making versions of the data that we're going to be sending into train jobs uh, to try to boost our model performance as we're uh, working with the same data set. So we're not going to gather any new data here, but we're going to artificially create new data and we're going to pre-process it in ways that will make it um, essentially easier to model, and then we'll have a, a better finished model after we're done uh, with this process. But it takes some hypothesis testing. So I'll just kind of walk you through the way my thought process is working as I would be working on modeling this data set. So the first thing we're going to start doing here is pre-processing steps. So just for a vanilla version to get kind of like our baseline performance, I'm just going to 
basically apply two things, auto orient, which flips the image uh, in the correct direction based on EXIF data. And then we're gonna do resize down to 416. So this will take the image pixels and just do a 416 by 416 box. Uh, this is small, pretty good for quick inference. And then it also um, allows uh, us to kind of have a standard resolution to be uh, testing different models against. So go, we will go ahead and pick those. Those will be pre-selected and we'll hit generate here. And this we'll just call our 416 version. So this generates, this will send it into the back end and then generate a new data set version. And you'll see it, pay, it uh, posts over here to the left. So you're able to kind of keep track of the different versions that you um, are building and, and keep track of the different experiments that you're running. So we'll go ahead and uh, cancel the export here and we're just gonna use the one-click training integration to do our tests. So this is Revelflow Train. You can uh, hit one-click uh, button. This will send it into the back end. And um, now this train job has gone into the back end and we'll get some results back on how well it did afterwards. Um, so basically it'll send us an email at the end and that's all we need to do to uh, run our first experiment. Uh, so now we're gonna keep going and keep thinking about this and think about how we can make the modeling better. Um, so one of the first things I wanna do is um, start getting into the augmentation land. So um, augmentations basically make more images from our base training images. And uh, this will be a good way to improve model performance by not generating more data. We can just merely like generate the data um, artificially and then we can have more training data without having to go through and annotate it. So some things that I think make sense for this data set are to use a random crop. So this will basically zoom our images in and out. And this helps because the drone may not have been flying at an exact level as it's been going over the earth um, and taking images. So it might make sense to be kind of randomly zooming those images in and out. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit apply there. We've added a random crop. And then a couple other ones for this first iteration that I wanna add are to flip the images and rotate them. Um, this is because we were flying over a lake and this lake's coastline could kind of manifest itself um, in all sorts of different ways that are uh, flipped and tilted. So those I think make sense to apply here. I'll go ahead and apply both kinds of flips and I'll apply both kinds of rotates. Um, so there we go. That's uh, all the augmentations we're gonna make. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we can choose how many artificial images we wanna generate from our base images. So we'll just choose three here, um, but you can bump that up and you can try to experiment with actually like making a lot of artificial data uh, from your base training set and, and see how performance improves with that. So now we'll go ahead and generate this version um, I'm going to call it 416 flip rotate crop. So now we've got a new data set version coming in here. Um, and this one's actually going through and not just resizing, but it's making all the augs too. And we'll just go ahead and uh, click off, click this to launch that experiment, as I said. So a really convenient way to just kind of be quickly iterating on your ideas. And we'll go ahead and make a couple more versions here. Um, one that I want to try is kind of adding on to this. So there's uh, this concept of brightness. So, uh, you know, the drone might have been taking pictures uh, at different times of the day. So, um, or clouds may be going overhead. So the brightness might kind of help your model learn different uh, lighting settings. So I'll add that in there. And then there's another one here called Mosaic, which I really like, um, which tiles images together. This helps uh, the model kind of start to localize objects better and it doesn't rely on surroundings as much because there could be different tiles surrounding different objects. Um, and it's a good way to kind of mix and mosh um, and uh, add you know, those uh, added complexities and elements to the model that might actually improve it. So we'll go ahead and give it a try. Um, so we'll generate this data. We'll call this one 416 flip rotate crop brighten mosaic. So we'll do all of those to this, this data set. Um, so that's our next, uh, our next image. And as before, we'll just go ahead and, um, click Revelflow train and kick off a new experiment. And so the next thing I want to show you is another way that you can, uh, try to beat this data set or, or this, this isn't really beating the data set, but it's sort of editing the task essentially, um, which is you might actually consider, um, going through here and saying that, you know, this whole task, you labeled everything, but maybe you don't want to try to model it all. So 
uh, like, for example, you might decide that the uh, docks and the lifts are kind of overlapping and it's not as important to try to model both of them. So what if you said, you know, actually, I just want to model boat and I want to model um, dock. You know, those, those are the two that I think are the most important. So you can go ahead and just kind of filter out all the other classes and, and narrow the modeling problem down. So that's uh, that's a modify classes. So I'll go ahead and hit generate here and we'll try that. So we'll just call this flip rotate prop boat dock. So we'll see, we'll see how that one does. You know, the theory there is that since there's less to model, it'll be easier to kind of focus on those uh, two base classes that you want to model. Go ahead and kick an, off another training job here. So we're actually firing up a lot of GPUs here to kind of do these experiments, but that's pretty nice. Um, and then the last thing that I want to show you guys is to try one more experiment. Um, this experiment is going to be to tile our images. So here we can do, um, Basically, uh, we'll, we'll just remove the augmentations here to just see how the raw tiling does. Tiling simulates the idea of like, we're actually gonna be um, tiling the images into pieces so it's zoomed in, so it has higher resolution to be detecting objects. That's a really nice thing to have, especially with a data set that is this zoomed out. Um, so we'll remove modify classes, we'll try to model everything here, and I'll go ahead and hit tiling. So then we can uh, tile it down into two by two frames. And you can add extra tiling there if you want, but we'll just do two by two for now and see if that helps our model even more. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. And um, yeah, so this uh, is the new data set. We're gonna just call this one 416 tiling. Go ahead and ge hit generate. And uh, after we're done generating here, we'll go ahead and kick off another GPU training. And basically here, um, now we can look at our versions here and we can see kind of everything that we've kicked off. So we have the base 416, we have the 416 that's augmented with flip, rotate, crop. crop. We have some more augmentations where we added in Brighton and Mosaic. Then we actually started to filter some classes. So this is making the, uh, task uh, like a little bit less um, complex. And then we've also tiled, tiled to kind of zoom in with the resolution. So those are all the steps that we've taken. And uh, now basically an hour or so would elapse and the GPU training job would go. Um, and then you'd get your results back. Um, and then uh, these results will kind of tell you how well your model did on modeling the other part of your data set that you didn't show it during training. And so this metric we're gonna use is called MAP. Um, I'll put some links below on like more on what it is, but it's basically just a metric that shows you how well your model is doing. And the nice thing about this uh, YouTube today is I've already run these tests, so we can go ahead and check and kind of see into the future how our training jobs would have done. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and jump over here um, to this data set version, which is the same data set, all the same augmentations and the same training jobs, and we'll, we'll see what the results were. So um, to start off, we have the base uh, plane 416. Um, so this, uh, this is uh, just kind of like the, the very baseline approach. Um, and we can see just kind of basically how well this one did. Um, so you can see here that it's uh, 18%. Um, so that's not too high. And that's in some ways to be expected since we knew this was gonna be a hard task, but um, let's see if our augmentations uh, made things even better. So the next thing we tried was to flip, rotate, and crop. And you can see here that we actually got an even better map from that. We went from 18% all the way up to 42%, which is uh, more than doubling the performance of our model with the same data set. So this really shows you the power of using augmentation for a sparse data set, just already with this first experiment. Then let's take a look at Mosaic. Mosaic looks like it even added even a little bit more map to our model. So we're getting even better and better and we're uh, seeing these metrics come through on our data set versions. Um, and then let's see what happened when we actually um, filtered the classes. So this was when we just said, you know, let's actually take this complexity of the problem down and let's just model boats and docks. And we're gonna kind of uh, ignore the other classes. That went all the way up to 67%. So now we're actually getting to a pretty tractable model that's doing a pretty good job. And then the last thing we're gonna uh, check here is how our tiling job did. So remember, this is all the classes and we're tiling it, tiling it down. So we're actually kind of zooming in. And this is showing the power of tiling 
um, really, really showing brute force, the power of tiling uh, for, for aerial imagery or anything where you're trying to detect small objects that are far away. Um, our map went all the way up to 64.4%, um, which is, again, a pretty good model and pretty tractable. And it's really impressive what we were able to do uh, with just 70 images to be able to create a computer vision model that can identify these aerial objects, these aerial maritime objects that it's never seen before. Um, just by using uh, image augmentation, image pre-processing, and kicking off train jobs in the back end. Uh, these are all things that are possible uh, using the Rebelflow platform. And I look forward to a discussion below about what you think are good image pre-processing steps and image augmentation steps and how we can build just simply the best computer vision models with the limited data that we have. Um, and thanks so much for watching today. And I hope you like and subscribe below. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.